bit of both, right? So, I mean, if the parties know that young people aren't voting, uh, so if they have a limited amount of resources uh, and they only have so many people on the local campaigns actually knocking on doors, uh, it makes sense that you're going to knock on doors of people that you know have been your supporters and you know are actually going to turn out. So that it kind of a, of a more strategic um, and in terms of political contact. As for why young people aren't, aren't really translating these political conversations that they're having um, to voting on the political system, uh, this is something that we've been talking about and trying to th and think through at Samara for quite some time. Uh, I think really when you talk to young people, um, it, they care about issues and they are very passionate. Uh, but when it comes to kind of confronting uh, the electoral politics or this like more formal side of things uh, and actually casting a ballot, uh, they don't see it as, as effective um, as, some, as some of their kind of other moves. And I think what's happening uh, there's a bit of, a, like, of an immediacy effect happening. So young people talk about things on Twitter and online, uh, and they kind of can see results. So for, for our generation, um, you know, if we want to get someone, a CEO of a company um, that has done something wrong, if we want to get them removed, uh, all it takes is a Twitter kind of stampede, um, and things are going to happen. But we don't see that same kind of effect when it comes to uh, political participation or electoral kind of participation. So I think that young people are used to seeing this kind of instant gratification in terms of how they're communicating in all other aspects of their life. Uh, but when it comes to this more kind of formal thing, uh, it's, not, it's not translating the same way. And I think that's very frustrating to them. So this year, I do believe that uh, advanced polls doubled. Uh, and some, uh, there were some uh, polls on uh, indigenous um, communities that actually ran out of ballots and they had to like print them. Um, from a regular printer. Uh, I, and I think that the other thing that was powerful this election is that it was over Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, so a lot of Canadians, you know, had that extra Monday um, and they had a bit more time. But I do think that we could be a bit more innovative uh, when it comes to our elections and kind of how we think about them as something that you do during the day. I know in Australia, um, where everybody has to vote, they have um, election barbies, they call them, election barbecues. Uh, and people go to cast the ballot and then they all get together to kind of celebrate it. So it's not this kind of, you know, weird thing that you're doing by yourself that, you, you know, kind of intervenes on your day. Uh, but it's more of a social thing where you can take, you know, your friend um, or family member and kind of do it together. Uh, and I think that there's something powerful in that kind of social element uh, that we could, you know, improve on, whether that be more polling days. I, I mean, I often hear on campaigns, vote early and vote often. That's like their joke. Uh, so I, there's, there's power to it, for sure.